Geniet jij dag. Welkom terug, ons gesels met die SABS hoofadministrateur Jody Schultz, oor Schultz of Skultz, wat is het? Skultz. Skultz, you see. It's either Schultz or Scott, but this one is Scott's <laughs> about, uh, about standards in general in South Africa and, and, and the South African Bureau of Standards and the South African National Standards. You referred to, to hand sanitizer earlier, that there was a big issue in hand sanitizer, the comp composition of hand sanitizer. What is it comprised of? Uh, uh, and that's one of the things that you had to look at. Absolutely. So I'd get SMSs of pictures of people's hands blistering. Because, as you said, you know, you can manufacture something in your garage. Yes. Um, and so people were using all kinds of um, alcohols to ma manufacture hand sanitizer and selling this on the market. So the Bureau of Standards, we're not a regulator, and we, we also are in the business of voluntary standards. So there's no, it's not a compulsory standard. But so what we did is we partnered with the National Consumer Commission, both yeah. not only to, to the manufacturer, but also more importantly to the consumer who's using that product. But there are products that has to be standardized. Yes, and those are the, the compulsory standards. Those are the regulations. So, for instance, in the health space, the, the tablets you take, yeah. you know, you were talking about Zinplex. Sapra would, would regulate those. And yeah. so you have to produce it according to, the regulations. to those regulations. So I think just from like a practical point of view, if I walk into my nearest retailer, how many of those products, if do all of them have to be standardized, go through that, or will I actually find quite a few products on like the racks there that aren't, that haven't been approved by SAPS? You, you would find quite a lot of products. You know, you sound like my nine-year-old son. He's taken this as a mission to... To check. To check, check. mom. Yes. <laughs> so he goes into a large retail and he says, mom, none of these products have the SAPS mark on it. I don't think we should shop oh, here. <laughs> you know, so... Yes. So where products have a, a public health and public safety impact, okay. those are regulated by a range of regulators in the country. They can look to SABS to say, listen, come and develop the standard for us. So going back to the hand sanitizer example, we then realized that there the are different compositions of ethanol and, and alcohol. And so we amended the standard. We also amended the test methods. So for instance, you had to rub it on your hands um, twice within a 20 minute interval. We then changed it, rub it on your hands in a particular way, mm. uh, three times and in, in certain intervals, because we then wanted to test uh, whether that had in, any ad adverse impacts. So standardizing of product and process. Absolutely. Uh, but now internationally, obviously, South Africa doesn't stand alone. We, we, we're not an island in, in the world. We are part of the international community and part of the continent. Uh, what's the impact that, that South African Bureau of Standards has in, in, in the continent and, and internationally? So we belong to the International Standards Organization, ISO. Uh, we have about 260-odd experts participating in their technical committees because, wow. because we feel it's absolutely important for us to not only have a voice locally but mm. also to have a global presence because our manufacturers, many of our manufacturers export globally. And so that's how we change the dial. We also serve in leadership positions. So, we, you know, one of the SAB's colleagues, um, he serves on the ISO Policy Council, on the, on the council, determining policy for standards globally. So, you know, we, we really do play a, a very key role. On the continent, what we've done recently, and I think it was at the end of April, we've signed on to the African Standardization Organization, they have something called that they call mutual recognition agreements. It's, it's recognizing the SABS mark in Rwanda, in Ghana, in Kenya. Um, and so obviously our processes have to be aligned. So there's a lot of work. So we're busy with the national consultation to get views from across the economy um, by the end of May to say we're wanting to do this. What do you think? What are some of the loopholes? What are some of the things we need to watch out for? And so we'll put that position forward in, in RSO. So, um, you know, it's intended that if you're an exporter, you're wanting to export to Rwanda, you've got a SABS mark. It then saves you money because you don't have to go and pay for compliance mm. tests all of their processes because we recognize each other's marks. It's a success story. Absolutely. Mm. I mean, I'd say something about the quality of SABs and what they're doing because, uh, like you say, it saves money for people and also it's really nice to know that you also get recognition in another country because I, I can't imagine that that's a very easy process to make sure that standardization is exactly the same. So, absolutely, success story.
Yeah. So just on that, for instance, we've got bilateral relations with Namibia and, and Botswana. So they recognize our mark. We've got a, a large um, manufacturing um, uh, base that exports into Namibia and Botswana, yeah. and they then recognize our mark. We then have these bilateral meetings to assess that has there anything changed in the um, in the process. We do the, um, the number plates for them. Um, and so, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, cooperation that happens not only within uh, the domestic economy, but also within the continent and um, internationally. That's good news. Thank you very mm. much, Jody, for sharing it with us. Ja, daar het jy dit. Hoofadministrateer Jody Skols van SABS of SABS, want dit is een Engelse brand, nee, wat vanmorgen op ons gesels het oor standaarde. En wees jou nee, die standaarde wat jou maag gestel het, is soms die rechte ene, maar hier is aan die ene. Ja, ons gaan een bykie advertentie heen, en daarna, dan gesels ons films en TV-reekse. Blijf geskakel. Hulle noem ook een die stille moordenaar. 